How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Are Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace going to make it in Chicago? Today, we're going to be discussing their future, breaking down whether or not one of them or both of them make it through the year. I am your host, Chris Malpe, joined on Facecam the first time in a couple years. It feels nostalgic. It feels good to be back. I am joined with my co-host, Parth Shaw, today. Parth, how's it going, buddy? Doing pretty good. Uh, just had my first day of classes back, I guess, um, yesterday. Yeah, um, yesterday started school again, so just start back on the grind for school and then balancing it with bear stuff. So, yeah. Feels weird being back on face cam, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. I uh, kind of enjoy it, though. It looks nice. Yeah, it does look nice. So uh, we are back today talking about Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace's future in Chicago. Guys, by the way, as you can see above my head, this won't be here the next uncut or podcast or anything that we do, but this is the StreamYard tag. This is what we stream on now. Uh, We're doing live streams for all the games, a really big live stream coming this weekend for the Detroit Lions uh, with a really special guest. So be sure to be on the lookout for that uh, as well. I'm trying to find where to position my face. I'm blocking myself with the microphone, but whatever. It'll work for now. So we're here today to talk about Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. Three, re- three, three, let me see if I can get myself in there. Three reasons why they will not return to Chicago after the 2020 season. Parth isn't really clued in on this, so I'm going to go through all the reasons I had, and then we'll just discuss it a little bit. So starting off with Matt Nagy, we've got two reasons for Matt Nagy, one reason for Ryan Pace, um, and let's just hop right into it. So first and foremost for Matt Nagy, the first reason why I think he shouldn't be in Chicago after the 2020 season is, And it's a pretty simple one. He benched Mitchell Trubisky too early. We didn't know that heading into the season that Trubisky was going to be benched in week three. We knew coming in that Trubisky would be on a very short leash. Now, is it good that he was benched? Probably not looking back on it. And that's not a knock on Nick Foles either. Nick Foles came in in that week three Atlanta game, played some very good football. It's what we wanted to see. It's what we like to see. But ever since then, and it was tough, you know, the Bears had a tough stretch of opponents, obviously, the Colts, the Buccaneers, uh, the Panthers were a little bit of an off one, but Rams, Saints, Titans, uh, it it was a little bit of a tough stretch for him, and then obviously he came out early, but Nick Foles was Matt Nagy's guy. We all knew that heading into the 2020 season. It wasn't Ryan Pace's guy. Uh, It was Matt Nagy's guy. He came in because of his familiarity with the offense, his familiarity with Bill Lazor and John DeFilippo, and obviously... It just didn't work out. Foles now out with a hint pointer. We'll see who's going to start in week 13. It seems like uh, Matt Nagy said there's no reason why it shouldn't be Trubisky, but that's my first reason for why uh, Matt Nagy won't make it because Foles was his guy. He put him in early. He benched Mitchell Trubisky, who was technically 3-0. and I think he would have been 2-1 and if he had played the rest of that game uh, against the Atlanta Falcons, but he was 3-0 and as a starter uh, on paper, so I think that's the first reason why I think Matt Nagy should be fired Parth, I want to pass it to you. Obviously, you don't have any reasons here. We kind of rushed into this upload, but Nagy, obviously, uh, it seemed like the leash for Trubisky was short. He threw Foles in there very early, and Foles struggled. I think the only statistical category that he's doing better than Trubisky in so far uh, is completion percentage. Uh, so do you think this would be a viable reason to fire Matt Nagy, uh, him benching Mitchell Trubisky too early and giving up on him? I think so. Um from what, from what I've seen so far, both quarterbacks haven't played well all year. Uh, that's for sure. But I think Mitch Trubisky, I think, did a better job than what Nick Foles showed us, especially in the four or five games Nick Foles started in. Um, you know, Foles struggled. Uh, it was obvious he couldn't do well under this offensive line. I don't think any quarterback can. But I think Trubisky still gives us a better chance under this offensive line just because he can run out the pocket, you know, make plays himself, um, even though he couldn't against Green Bay. I mean, we saw – Green Bay absolutely take over us and demolish us. But I think still at the end of the day, Trubisky gives us the better chance to win. And that's why, um, you know, taking Trubisky out when he was actually playing pretty well. I mean, if you look into it, you know, he did come back from a Detroit really? in the fourth quarter. Um, he did play well against uh, the Giants in the first half. I guess the second half, the offense it, it, as a whole played terrible. And then in the third game against Atlanta, that was, get anything going. <laughs> that was bad. I agree with that one. And I do actually what I was fine with the benching at that moment. But what got me off caught, caught me off guard was um, keep keeping Foles in there after the couple games Foles played. Thought Foles was playing a lot worse. So I think I would have if if he wanted to correct himself when the team had a chance, he should have done it at least week six or seven, in my opinion. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think we're on agreement there. The first reason why Matt Nagy should be fired. Uh, he benched Trubisky too early. He brought in Foles and Foles was his guy and that didn't work out. So moving on to Ryan Pace for a little bit. Uh, my first reason for why Ryan Pace should be fired is that he's missed on early round picks. And obviously uh, similar to how Nagy is Foles or uh, Foles is Nagy's guy. Uh, Nagy is Pace's guy. He, he's the handpicked guy that he chose to bring in and Nagy obviously hasn't succeeded. So taking a look at some of Pace's past draft picks and don't mind me, I'm looking at my phone, but Kevin White, receiver, selected number seven overall in 2015. We know how that played out. That was a miss. Leonard Floyd, outside linebacker, number nine overall in 2016. Also a miss for how he played in Chicago. And then obviously the huge one, one of the biggest busts in history. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll gladly say that Mitchell Trubisky, quarterback, selected number two overall in 2017. Ryan Pace has missed on so many picks. He's hit on a ton. You know, obviously Roquan Smith, Eddie Goldman, Cody Whitehair, and then and another miss slash bust that he had. Uh, Adam Shaheen, tight end, number 45 overall in 2017. That was bad as well, but he's gotten a lot of good guys. You know, James Daniels, Anthony Miller's been solid. Um, and he's had some bad late round picks as well. Guys like Hieronymus Grasu in 2015. He's had a lot of good and bad picks. Pace has really gone up and down throughout his time uh, as the GM for the Bears. I mean, you just take a look at the 2020 draft cast. It looks like Cole Komet could be good, but as of right now, he's underperforming. I, I, Parth, I think you agree with me on that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Jalen Johnson. Oh, sorry, go for it. No, I was just going to say Cole Komet's been pretty bad. To and that might be partially to Nagy not using him properly as well. Yeah, uh, I guess so, but... You know, that drop in the end zone, you know, costed us a lot, I guess. And then Jalen Johnson, you take a look at the other second-round pick. He's been awesome. He's been a steal. Uh, you take a look further down that draft, Travis Travis Gibson, who he he traded up for, hasn't seen the field. He's been a healthy scratch every week. Kendall Vildor's been seeing some special teams action, and he looks like he could be a decent pick, but otherwise he doesn't look like he's really performing too much. And then finally, Darnell Mooney, uh, he's been great. So Pace has gone up and down in the draft uh, throughout time, and then, I mean, I guess for my second part of that point with Pace, there's been a lot of, of speculation that he's in, endeared himself uh, to the family, to the McCaskey family, that is. And I'm not sure how true that is, but we'll go with it and we'll say that that's true. Um, so at the end of the day, Pace and Nagy are both millionaires. Uh, endearing yourself to the family doesn't mean that you should be getting a paycheck on a week-to-week basis. So Parth, I'm passing it back around to you now once again. We've seen Ryan Pace miss on some picks. We've seen him miss on Nagy as the head coach, most notably, obviously, missing on Mitchell Trubisky. So do you think that is a reason why Matt Nagy should, or excuse me, why Ryan Pace uh, should be packing up his bags, or do you think otherwise? Yeah, I mean, he should be packing up his bags. He should be packing up his bags right now. I mean, even he also signed Mike Lennon. We can't forget that. He's missed on three yep. quarterbacks so far. You know, he traded for Nick Foles. He drafted Mitchell Trubisky. And then he signed uh, free agent quarterback Mike Lennon in 2017. Uh, he's done all three phases to get a quarterback, and he's missed every single time. I think it's time Ryan Pace goes. This offense has not done well at all under Ryan Pace, in my opinion, as he hasn't been able to put up, put, put in pieces. Um, you know, last year we went into the offseason with holes at quarterback and the offensive line and tight end. Um, he definitely fixed tight end. He brought in like five, six tight ends. You know, Jimmy Graham's been playing well so far this year. I'll give him credit there. But offensive line, we did not even draft an offensive lineman until the seventh round. I mean, that's subpar talent you're trying to find and trying to make them come in and play a starting offensive line for the Chicago Bears. Uh, that's not going to happen. This this offensive line is ranked one of the worst in the NFL. And when you have a quarterback like a Trubisky or Foles, it's just going to make the offense look even a lot worse. Yeah, uh, I got to go ahead and agree with you. And then finally... We're hopping into our last point now. By the way, guys, this is only our first upload on the day. Uh, you're seeing this on Tuesday, probably around 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be coming back tonight uh, with Meet the Opponents, the uh, Detroit Lions. They are back in town for Week 13, so be sure to look out for that tonight. But taking a look at the last reason, we're going back to Nagy now because uh, I feel like that was kind of a double-headed spear with pace there uh, with, with Matt Nagy being his coach as well as the couple missed draft. Uh, picks early on, but for the Bears and Matt Nagy, why I think he should be fired the, ra the last reason, uh, the offense is terrible. It's 29th of 32nd in the league. Matt Nagy didn't give up play calling until week 10, uh, and it should have been given up way earlier. I mean, you take a look at this offense. They're the 31st offense in the league overall in, in yards total. 
Uh, they're 23rd in the passing game and dead last in the rushing game uh, in regards to yards. And they haven't been able to get anything done on offense. Sure, Nagy did what he needed to do and gave the play calling over to Bill Lazor. But I think it should have happened well earlier. It hasn't gone well with Lazor either, unfortunately, like we hoped it would. But it, it hasn't gone well whatsoever. So I think that's the final reason why Matt Nagy should be fired. He's someone who's supposed to be in here being an offensive guru. Uh, I, I think he thinks that this team is more like the Kansas City Chiefs than it is the Chicago Bears. Obviously, he does reign from Kansas City, but the Bears don't have the talent that the Kansas City Chiefs have. He has never been someone to design plays to Mitchell Trubisky's strengths. I don't think Mitchell Trubisky by any means is any incredible quarterback, but if you're playing him, you have to play towards his strengths. You have to get him rolling outside the pocket. You have to get him in play action. You have to give him RPOs. You have to use his wheels. That is something that Nagy refused to do. Also, throughout the year, the, the run game calling ha has been incredibly suspect. The offensive line hasn't been great, but uh, the run game game suspect. Uh, it's last in the league right now in total production, uh, and I, I think Nagy needs to go. Or I, I just don't see how you can give him another year. Um, we're, we'll probably talk about it in the future, but obviously we know there's improvements that need to be made upon the offensive line uh, as well as at the quarterback position. And I, I think it also stems through the front office. So that's why we made this video. Uh, we think we might see a new Bears regime in 2021. It'll be interesting to see it. But before I close this one off, Parth, the offense has been absolutely porous this year. Uh, do you think that's something that falls on Nagy's shoulders? And do you think that's one of the reasons why he might get fired after this season? I mean, absolutely. Um, last year, the Bears offense was also I think bottom five in almost every category this year, we're bottom two. I mean, if you take out the Jets, we're the worst offense in the league. So, I mean, that just shows how bad this offense is. Um, we've won five games this year, all credit to the defense. Um, if we didn't have a defense, uh, we'd probably be 0-16, just like the New York Jets. Um, but, yeah, I think Matt Nagy's not improved offensive-wise. Uh, he gave up his play calling way too late. And uh, there's a discipline issue. The, the Bears are ranked, have the most penalties in the league. And there's currently players just liking tweets of, you know, trying to go to other teams. Alan and Robinson liking Alan tweets Robinson. about the 49ers, Saints, and the Packers. And yeah, I have Anthony a horrible just, feeling that he's going to go to Green Bay, and that's just going to be terrible. Oh, that would be terrible. But Anthony Miller just liked to tweet about going to New England. You know, Cordero, Cordero Patterson just liked to tweet about going back to Minnesota. So, I mean, it, the wide receiver group is falling apart. You know, that's not a good sign. That means this locker room is broken. It's divided. It's going to turn really toxic, and if that's something he you do just not called want. out the defense, who has bailed them out in all of yeah, their wins. He did. Yeah, he's trying to call out players who have been basically saving his job so far. I think this man's definitely gone. I, I'd be surprised if he isn't the first Bears coach in history to be fired during the season. Yeah, and George McCaskey is five for five, uh, at, or three for three actually, uh, as Zach Rimbo Bears Complex on Instagram, our, our editor and head video guy. Uh, posted a couple of days ago, he's three for three in firing either a coach, a GM, or both when the team has a five-game losing streak. So it should be very interesting to see what happens with the future of Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace in Chicago. But thank you guys so much for tuning into episode number 97 of Uncut. Uh, I know you guys wanted to have face cam back badly. It feels great to be back after a couple of years. The OGs will remember back when we were some pipsqueaks doing face cam a couple of years ago, but hopefully we can do more stuff like this moving forward. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, beardon.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs to get you guys ready for the Bears' week 13 game with the Detroit Lions. Also, probably we'll get an article up there in a couple of days about Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy's future in Chicago. If you would like to find the podcast on Instagram and Twitter, you can go to at Bear Down on both platforms. Um, we just gave away a Khalil Mack jersey. We're already starting to plan our Christmas giveaway. Going to give away probably some sort of signed memorabilia, maybe a Christmas theme giveaway with like a Bears coat and a hat. So follow us on both those platforms. You can enter those giveaways for free. Uh, we, we want to give back to you guys as much as possible because you guys show us so much support. And finally, you can find the links to my as well as par social media down in the description, Instagram and Twitter. We're active on both platforms. Be sure to check us out over there as well. Parsha, things are going downhill. Matt Nagy ripping on players, ripping on staff. Uh, this season is going downhill very quickly. We all remember uh, after the Panthers game, the Bears were first in the NFC, first in the NFC North. Uh, also, and now you take a look after a five game losing streak later, they are one game away from being last place in the division as well as being way out of the playoffs. So any last words before we close this one off? 
yeah, this game against Detroit's, I guess, a must win if you're still trying to stay in the playoff race. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even think know possible. if I want that at this point. I, I don't want this. I don't want that at either. I think if we lose, I think we're, we'd actually be in last place in the division. Um, the Bears don't have any division wins. Actually, you know, we have one division. One over win. Detroit. Yeah, one over Detroit. Detroit. But I think that'd be our only one that we're probably going to get all year. So, Yeah. Well, we shall see. Uh, there's a lot going around circulating on Twitter and Instagram right now. Fire everybody on the Chicago Bears. <laughs> but yeah. we'll see if it happens. Uh, it really depends on how these last couple of weeks go. But I think we both expect that either Nagy or Pace or both might be gone after the 2020 season. So changes might be coming soon in Chicago. It's been a pleasure to be your host once again. My name is Chris Malpe. It feels great to be back on Facecam. Feels back doing the OG stuff for you guys. Once again, we are streaming on StreamYard, but we will probably in the future, if we keep doing Facecam, uh, more than likely get uh, these outlays out of there and get our own stuff in here. But it feels great to be back. Bears fans, as always, you know what to do. Stay safe and bear down. We'll be back tonight with Meet the Opponents, the Detroit Lions, and we will see you then. Peace out, guys. Mm -hmm.